important observations and the key features of 5 level diode clamp multi level inverter are covered in part number 4. So to understand the observations and the key features easily, let us first of all have a glance at one leg of 5 level DC MLI and corresponding switching table as well as the waveform of single pole or 5 level diode clamp multi level inverter. So in one leg of 5 level DC MLI you can see we need 4 biasing capacitors. 8 switching devices, 8 main diodes and 6 clamping diodes. We have used less number of clamping diodes in order to reduce the complexity in the construction of this leg as well as to simplify the circuit diagram. And we know that one pole has ability to produce only the half cycle of the complete AC output signal. And the switching table represents wherever the one is exist that means the switch is in the on state condition and zero means the switch is in the off state condition. And the first column of the switching table defines the magnitude of the level. So there are five levels the first is zero, second with the magnitude VDC by four, next is with the magnitude VDC by two. The fourth level with magnitude 3 VDC by 4 and the fifth level with magnitude VDC. Observations of diode clamp multi level inverter. Each switch is turned on only once per cycle. So, from the switching table, you can see that SA1 switch is turned on while producing the fifth level VDC. And for all other levels, the switch SA1 remains in the off state condition. During the positive portion of the wave, other leg is participating. So, there is no change in SA1. Therefore, during the entire cycle, while going from 0 to maximum value and returning from maximum value towards the 0, on off takes place only once right here for switch is a1 the switch becomes on while going from level 4 to level 5 and the switch will become off while going from level 5 to level 4 and thereafter it will remain off four complementary switch pairs in each leg pairs are sa1 SA1 dash, SA2, SA2 dash, SA3, SA3 dash and finally SA4 and SA4 dash. So these four complementary switch pairs are from leg A and similarly we have to use other four complementary switch pairs for leg B in order to produce a complete cycle at the output side. If one of the switch from the pair is in the on state condition then other switch should remain in the off state condition. So we can see that in the switching table for SA1 and SA1 dash from this first pair whenever the switch SA1 is in the on state condition the switch SA1 dash complementary switch is in the off state condition and you can see that for the first four levels 0 0 0 0 SA1 is in the off state condition but SA1 dash is in the on state condition for the first four levels. Four switches are always turned on at the same time to maintain the stress VDC by 4. So the first level you can see that all the lower half switches are in the on state condition. For the second level you can see SA4, SA1 dash, SA2 dash and SA3 dash are in the on state condition. Thereafter two switches from upper half and two switches from the lower half. That implies that for any level at least 
four switches should be in the on state condition to maintain the voltage stressed VDC by four across each switching device. Now let us see the features of diode clamp multi-level inverter. The first one is high voltage rating for blocking diodes. Each switching device is required to block a voltage level of VDC divided by M minus 1. So let us understand the first point uh, by considering the first level, right? If we want to produce the first level across the output terminal, then all the lower half switches should be turned on. So assume that SA1 dash, SA2 dash, SA3 dash and SA4 dash are in the on state condition. So the upper terminal of the output gets connected to node V1. Right? As well as you can see that the lower terminal of SA4 is also connected to the terminal V1. That means voltage appears across these four series connected switching devices starting from SA1 to SA4 is equal to the supply voltage. So the voltage drop takes place across each switching device is equal to VDC divided by M minus 1 and here M is equal to 5 so 5 minus 1 is equal to 4. Right. So while producing the first level with the magnitude 0, the voltage drop takes place across each of switch is equal to VDC divided by 4. The clamping diodes need to have different reverse voltage blocking ratings. For example, when SA1 dash to SA4 dash are on, at that time, this DA3 dash clamping diode needs to block VDC by 4. Why? Because you can see that whenever all the lower switches are in the on state condition, these diodes anode terminal gets connected to the node V1 and the cathode terminal is already connected to V2. So the diode DA3 appears in parallel with the C4. And the voltage drop across C4 is equal to VDC by 4. So you can say that DA3 dash would block the voltage VDC by 4. What about DA2 dash? So for that let us understand the connection of the DA2 dash. When the, all the lower half switches are in the on state condition, at that time anode of the DA2 dash is connected to node V1 and the cathode of DA2 dash is connected to node V3. That means this diode, second clamping diode DA2 dash is connected across this C3 and C4. Right? So the voltage drop across one capacitor is VDC by 4. So VDC by 4 plus VDC by 4 is equal to VDC by 2. That much amount of voltage must be blocked by DA2 dash. And for DA1 dash, anode of DA1 dash is connected to V1 through these lower switches and the cathode terminal of DA1 dash is connected to node V4 which means diode DA1 dash is connected across these three capacitors, right? And the total amount of the voltage would appear across DA1 dash is equal to 3 VDC by 4. So this observation says that whenever we go for lesser number of the clamping diodes in order to simplify the circuit or to reduce the complexity in construction of 5 level DC MLI, then the voltage ratings of each clamping diodes would be different. We have to choose DA3 dash with blocking capability VDC by 4, DA2 dash with blocking capability VDC by 2 and DA1 dash with blocking capability 3 VDC by 4. And that creates asymmetricity in the construction of 5 level DC MLI.
in order to have the symmetricity in the construction which means that I want to use all the clamping diodes must have same voltage blocking ratings and for that if the blocking voltage rating of each diode is same as that of the switching device then number of the clamping diode required for each leg is equal to m minus 1 multiply by m minus 2 where m is the number of level so this is the expression we have seen while calculating the number of clamping diodes for five level right but as I said that to reduce the complexity as well as to simplify the diagram we may use only six clamping diodes but to use the lesser number of clamping diodes we have to encounter with this problem and that is not advisable the next feature of DCMLI is unequal switching device ratings Right from the table you can see that SA1 switch conducts for VAO is equal to VDC that means for the fifth level only whereas SA4 switch conducts over entire cycle except the first level it implies that the SA1 has to remain in the on state condition for the only one level whereas SA4 should remain in the on state condition for four levels so such an unequal condition requires different current ratings for the switching devices next feature of the DCMLI is capacitor voltage unbalance voltage levels at the capacitor terminals are different right you can see that at node v2 the magnitude is vdc by 4 here magnitude is vdc by 2 here 3 vdc by 4 and at last vdc so the currents supplied by the capacitors are also different these voltage imbalance can be resolved by replacing the capacitors with controlled constant DC source like PWM voltage regulators or batteries so this is the solution to overcome with the problem capacitor voltage unbalance advantages of radio clamp multi-level inverter when the number of levels is high enough the harmonic content is low enough to avoid the need of filters right we understood the working principle of the three level as well as the five level diode clamp multi level inverter and if we compare the shape of the output waveform of three level and five level then obviously we can say that the shape of output produced by five level diode clamp multi level inverter is much more nearer to the sinusoidal shape compared to three level and because of that we can finally conclude that as we increase the number of the levels we will get the shape much more nearer to the sinusoidal signal and hence we can reduce the harmonic content and because of that we may not require the filters to eliminate the harmonics the control method is simple inverter efficiency is high because all the devices are switched at fundamental frequency disadvantages of diode clamp multi-level inverter excessive clamping diodes are required when the number of levels is high right in the previous slide uh, you have seen the equation to calculate number of clamping diodes m minus 1 into m minus 2 and if we calculate for 5 level DCMLI then the result is 12 we need 12 clamping diodes per leg and to produce the complete waveform with the positive half cycle as well as the negative half cycle we need 24 clamping diodes in the construction so as the number of the level increases obviously M minus 1 into M minus 2 that answer would also increase so we will require more and more number of the clamping diodes to produce 
more number of the levels in the output of multi level inverter it is difficult to control the real power flow of individual converter in multi level system that is the another disadvantage of dcmli